Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to AJ 102, Introduction to Criminal Justice and Law Enforcement Online. My name is Tony Farrar, and I am going to be your instructor for this semester. And tonight's lecture is going to cover the syllabus review. Now, before we jump into that, just a little background about myself. As far as education goes, I have a master's degree in administration of justice. I have a second master's degree or MBA in business, and then I have a third master's degree in criminology from the University of Cambridge, yes, of all places in England. So what I really hope to do this semester is to provide you with my 34 to 35 years of experience in policing um, kind of as an overview, and that's really what an introduction to law enforcement course is about. So we're going to cover quite a few different topics as we go through each one of these chapters. And, and I anticipate this is going to be a great class. We're going to learn a lot. We're going to have a lot of fun as well. Uh, but it is important, again, that you understand exactly what the course contains, and that's the reason for uh, the syllabus review as well. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. So again, this is Introduction to Criminal Justice in Law Enforcement. The course is AJ 102. The section number is 3504. And of course, this is the spring of 2019 uh, semester, and this is the online course. So um, hopefully you're in the right class. If you're not, you need to uh, figure out where you need to be. Now, moving on down to some instructor contact information to give you a little bit of uh, where I'm located. Um, I am on the Menifee campus, and you can see the address, and my desk phone number is there. Um, I also have an email, so that is probably the best way to get in touch with me. Um, I have a Twitter account as well, so you can, you can tweet me if you like. Um, I'm pretty good with technology, but you may have to give me a minute to respond back to you because I'm probably not as good as some of the people that you may uh, communicate with. I also have a couple of other links there. The first one is to the Criminal Justice Club. This is an organization uh, through the Criminal Justice Department, if you will. We have one on the Menifee campus and one on the San Jacinto campus. And basically the club does a lot of different activities, events, and training. And if you'd like to be part of that, uh, you can join their Facebook or you can look on the Facebook by clicking on the link there and it'll provide you with some more information. And then I also have a link to the career education website. And this is important because there is a lot of good information there as it relates to career education and counseling and even preparatory information so you know how to navigate an online course and we'll get into that a little bit further as we go through this lecture. So uh, once again I'm on the Menifee campus in the 900 building. My office number is 961. I do keep office hours on campus that you can see here on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, online as far as monitoring the courses I pretty much monitor them all week long. However, I do dedicate some special time to be online on Wednesdays and Thursday evenings. You can see the times there, or if you have questions, you can let me know. But as you'll see, when we go through the syllabus, I there's a special place in the discussion board area where if you have questions, you can post those questions, and either another student or myself um, can get back to you. So I'm also available by appointment. The best way to contact me is by email. Now, if we're right about down here, if you do email me, please preface it with AJ102-3504. You don't necessarily have to put the introduction to criminal justice, but put the class number here so that way I know which class you're in. Um, a lot of times I have overlapping courses or I might be teaching the same course both online face-to-face -face, or maybe even two online courses of the same subject. So it's hard for me sometimes to remember exactly which class you're in. So that will really help me out. So I have an example right here. So using my own name for our AJ102-3504 Introduction to Criminal Justice. And again, it's because I teach several courses and I wanna make sure that I can get back to you with the information that you need in a timely fashion. Now, all emails 
really should come from your MSJC email account. Also, if you are requested to submit a written assignment in Canvas, please submit it in Microsoft Word. If you send a document or upload a document in another word processing format, like WordPerfect or Google Docs or something like that, there's no guarantee that Canvas will be able to open it and I won't be able to read it. So if I can't read it, I can't grade it or give you credit. So please do that. Um, if you are going to use a different word processing format, if you make the file itself a PDF, then chances are I might be able to convert it and, and read it. But if you stick with Microsoft Word, that would definitely uh, be a benefit. Now, as far as the syllabus goes, I, I, like, I like to make this notation in there. The syllabus is a living document and subject to change during the semester. Uh, students will be made aware of changes when they occur in the form of an email or an announcement in Canvas. And I send out, and you will see, quite a few different announcements. Uh, to try to remind you of certain things. So make sure you set up your email or your text messages in Canvas in this particular course to where you can receive those emails or announcements so that way you're kept up to speed on things that might change within the class. Typically they don't. Uh, with an online class things are pretty much set but you never know there might be a change uh, so I need you to make sure that you're getting that information. Now, a little bit about the course itself. So we're right here at the top. The, the course basically is an introduction into the history and philosophy of law enforcement and those various agencies involved in the administration of the criminal justice process, all the way from detection of crime to patrol offenders to taking a look at modern police services and also looking at those career opportunities that you have out there. So again, this course encompasses quite a few different subjects. And each chapter you'll see as we go through, we'll have a different topic. Some of the objectives as far as uh, what we hope to have you uh, glean from the course and, or things that we're going to actually look at. We're going to examine the constitutional amendments known as the Bill of Rights. And those are really important, and you'll see as we go through the course, you'll understand how important those are. And, and take a look at which one of those really has the greatest impact on the criminal justice system. And you'll see that some, while they're all important, some might be a little more applicable. And we're going to analyze and take a, a close look at the process by which a criminal case moves through the system, let's say from investigation all the way through the court system, even to an appeal. And you'll learn what an appeal is as we get further into the class. We're also going to look at some, some theories on crime and, and, and take a look at or try to explain what causes crime. And that's always an interesting subject in itself, why people do what they do. And, and, and we'll take a look at that. And if you want more information on, on something like that, and these theories of crimes interest you, I would highly suggest a criminology course. Um, and that's AJ 112 if you're looking for another class to pick up. We're going to look at the differences uh, between the federal and the state courts because there are some differences. And then finally, we're going to take a look at and, and, and kind of examine the, the major components or pieces, if you will, of the criminal justice system, that being law enforcement, the courts, and corrections. So that's, that's kind of an overview. There's a lot more to this course, but this is just kind of a basic overview. Now, the textbook that we're going to be using is right here. Um, I would highly suggest that you pick up the textbook. It is very important that you have the book, not just so you can read the chapters, but because of time limitations, the lectures, I'm going to cover as much as I can in the lecture. And you'll see that I do audio lectures just like I'm doing an audio lecture syllabus review right now. So I'll post the lectures in, in a regular lecture format with notes and uh, key terms and PowerPoints and things like that. But I'll give you an audio version just like I'm doing right now. But because I can't cover every single subject in each chapter, it's going to be incumbent upon you to kind of fill in the blanks. 
and, and reading the textbook will really help you add context to some of the discussions and things that we're talking about. So that's the real reason why you, you really do need the textbook. And as far as where this book is available, well, you can get it at the college bookstore, but you folks are a lot more astute at where to pick up textbooks and, and what have you, so I'll leave that up to you. But uh, getting back to the book itself, the title is Introduction to Law Enforcement and Criminal Justice. It's the 12th edition. Uh, it is published by Cengage Learning. It's a fairly new book, so it's a really good book. And again, I would encourage you to pick up the book. Now, as we go a little bit further, you'll see something here called the California Penal Code. And in the syllabus, I have it marked optional. Well, honestly, you, you, you don't need it because you can find any code that you want on the internet. So if you have a penal code, it's that big fat, usually it's a blue color. Um, I mean, they have them in other colors, but typically it's blue. And it's got all of the California codes in it. And that's why it's so large. Uh, so it's not a primary textbook, but we might be referring to some codes from time to time. But if you don't have a copy of it, that's okay, because you can go online to the link I, I posted here, and you'll be able to find, again, any code that you want. Uh, so you can go to the website, legalinfo.ca.gov, and you can find uh, those codes that we'll be discussing. Now, as far as check-in goes, and, and this is important because this is going to let me know that you're out there um, and, you're, and you're in the class. Now, because this is an online course, I'm going to open it a few days early. So it's going to be open and available on Monday, January 14th at about 5 p.m. Now, the course officially opens. The official opening date for this online class is going to be Wednesday, January 16th at 5 p.m., but I'm going to open it a couple of days earlier. And the reason is that I need you to make sure that you check in, and you're going to do that using the discussion board. So here we are right here, if you're following along. And discussion board number one, that's going to be your official check-in. And I'll show you what it looks like as we get to the end of this particular lecture. So don't panic if you're not sure what an online course shell looks like when you look in Canvas. But that's your official check-in. Now, along with that, there's two parts. So the first is the discussion board number one. That's your check-in. The second part is you're going to take a very short 10-question syllabus quiz which is another reason that we're going over the syllabus in this type of lecture format so you can have all of the information you need to be successful in your syllabus quiz as well. And taking that quiz will help me make sure that you know some important facets of this course um, as far as how many tests we're going to have or how many quizzes we're going to have or when your papers are due, etc. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Now, this is a, a somewhat fast-paced class with, with, a, with a little bit of reading, not a lot, but again, you're, you, need to, you need to add the context by reading the textbook, and you're going to get a lot of information thrown at you each week. So with that, you need to keep up on the reading, and don't just rely on the PowerPoint lectures alone to get you through the class. And, and the reason is that some of the legal terms might be a little hard to understand, and therefore you need to read the, the textbook chapters carefully to fully understand them and to add what we've been talking about, that context to the subject matter. So in essence, what I'm saying is I want you to be able to apply what you learn, not just memorize it. And, and, I, and I'm pretty sure that makes sense to everybody. Now, in some cases, you might have to look up a word or a term on the internet or the penal code or, or what have you. But if you have a problem with any type of concept or definition or something like that, let me know. And I'll discuss it in Canvas, either in the discussion area or I'll send out an announcement with the information. So sometimes people are afraid to maybe say something because they, they don't really understand it, but there's someone else out there that doesn't get it either. So that's why we have these opportunities to be able to discuss certain, certain things. So this class is not a super easy class. It does require you to do your part, which is to do the work, which we're going to get to in just a second. But at the end of the day, it's going to be very rewarding in a sense that you're going to gain a lot, of, a lot of knowledge that you didn't have about criminal justice before you enrolled 
in this course. Now, with that said, what are some of the expectations? Well, here we are right here. And you're, you are going to participate again in, and, and complete a variety of different things that hopefully will help you achieve those learning objectives that we just went over. So let's walk through the six course expectations. So the first one is reading the required materials, which means looking at the PowerPoints or listening to the audio lecture, either one or both, looking at the lecture notes or articles that I might post, and reading the textbook chapters. And I will also, to kind of help out, I will post basically what I call a definitions page. So there, there'll be a separate sheet that has um, key terms or definitions along with, so you have the term and the definition. And in some aspects, I might even put the page number in there. But if I don't, you'll have the key terms and the definition. It's important that you know those because those are some of the main things that we'll be looking at or highlighting in some of the chapters. So number two, viewing the weekly videos relating to each chapter, uh, the PowerPoints with audio and case study videos. So as, as I as we get through this syllabus review and I and we log actually into the canvas shell, I'll show you that I have an introduction to each particular chapter. And in that introduction, there'll be some directions maybe on what you need to do. Something like this is chapter two. Uh, this is what we're going to cover this week. Watch this video um, or read this article and that will help you add some context to some of the discussions or, or the quiz that we're going to have later on in this particular chapter and, and hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Now those introductory videos they're not mandatory they're just to help you add a little bit of context but the lecture video the actual chapter lecture video that is something that is is definitely mandatory and you'll see that I've also posted it in several different formats so you might just have the lecture notes, you'll have the lecture PowerPoint, you will have the lecture audio video, and then you'll also have a closed caption lecture audio video should you want that um, or, or need that. So you have a couple of different ways to access the same information. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. Um, number four, completing the online and, and timed quizzes. So there, there'll be a quiz pretty much every week that corresponds with the chapter. Uh, with the quizzes, I will give you, uh, it's a 10 question quiz, and you basically get 20 minutes to do a 10 question quiz, and I'll give you two shots at the quiz. Um, so that, that's pretty simple. Number five, completing the online and timed exams. Um, usually you get quite a bit more time for an exam. I believe you get 75 minutes for a 50 question exam, so it's plenty of time. You only get one shot at a chapter exam, though. And number six, complete the midterm writing assignment. Now, this is very important because writing is a big part of policing, and you will soon discover that. So uh, take the writing part seriously, but don't panic on the writing part. I will help you get through it if that's something that, that is really that comes maybe a little bit more difficult for you. Now, just kind of a, a point of reference here. Uh, we're right down here. Um, and I really want you to kind of pay attention to this. Failure to, failure to participate in the discussion boards, uh, missing quizzes or exams, or failing to turn in um, any other assignments or missing a combination of these activities may cause you to be dropped from the class. So it's really important that you stay up on your work. There's not really a lot of work in the course, but you do need to finish it within a certain time frame. And I, I'll show you that in just a few minutes. And if you don't do, let's say, a couple of assignments in a row, that would mean that in a couple of weeks I haven't heard from you. And my assumption is, is that you, you've either dropped the class or you're not interested or what have you. So it's hard for me to know that you still want to be in the course. And that's why you need to complete your weekly assignments so I know that you're out there and still staying in the class. And, and hopefully that kind of makes sense. Now, if you're unsure about your readiness for an online course, I've, I've, I've provided a couple of links. And the first one here is a link to the MSJC online learning page. And the second one is to a similar page that has some video tutorials and some other related information 
to kind of help you gauge on whether or not you're ready for an online course. Because it is a little bit different than a face-to-face -face class that you might do in a classroom. Specifically, in an online class, you have to self-regulate, meaning that you have to make sure that you turn your assignments in between certain time periods. So you may have to set reminders or use your calendar. Now again, I'll send out a lot of reminders, but at the end of the day, it's going to be your responsibility to make sure that you are getting your stuff done in a timely fashion. So let's go ahead and move on. Um, technology responsibility. You are responsible, here we are up here, for your computer equipment and the internet connection independent of the campus. So because of that, you will need to plan your course work to be able to accommodate any computer related issues or problems. And, and any of those problems aren't necessarily grounds for me relaxing the deadlines. So if you're unsure whether a paper got uploaded right or some transaction went through or what have you, it's going to be your responsibility to figure that out and to find an alternative means of providing or completing the assignment as required. So basically I say all that to say don't wait until the last day, the last hour before all your assignments are due and then start them and you run out of time or something goes wrong with your computer or your internet and you don't have a connection or something similar. Um, as bad as that sounds, that's kind of, that is your responsibility. Now, if something happens at the college with Canvas and Canvas is down for a reason, then sure, we'll extend deadlines and do different things. But again, don't wait until the last minute. Now, to help you, I've kind of listed a couple of main functions of Canvas that you will see in the course, in this particular course. Now, for you to be successful in this class, you really do need to check Canvas at a minimum two times per week for any announcements or emails or changes or anything else. And you also need to look in all areas in your class shell, your Canvas shell, to make sure that you're well informed about assignments and different things. So below, which is kind of like where we're going now, are some areas to focus on. Now the module area. This is where your weekly assignments are going to be located and, and I'm going to title each module so you, you'll know exactly what week the information is for. So the example I have listed here, module one is going to be titled week one. And week one is going to contain all the assignments that you need to complete for week one. Does that make sense? And week two will contain all the assignments that you need for week two. The only thing that won't be in there will be your midterm essay. That's going to be in a separate area. And, and, and I'll show it to you. But for your weekly assignments, okay, it's all going to be in the modules. Discussions. This is, a, this is the area where discussions are going to occur on a couple of different topics. And I will also have a discussion board for general questions as well. So in, in those discussions, I may post links to videos or articles. Um, and they will also be in the content area. So the discussion, if there's a discussion board that's due, it's also going to be located in your folder, in your weekly folder. And there's a separate area for discussions too. And I'll, I'm going to show you this visually in, in a few minutes. So you'll get a good look at what it looks like. The announcement area, this is where you're going to find announcements for the class, including any relevant information on changes to exams, quizzes, or upcoming information that I need you to know about. So again, set up your phone or your computer or whatever electronic device that you're using to make sure that you receive those emails or you receive that information from the announcements via email or text message, however it is that you want to set it up. The grade book, this is where uh, your, grade, your grades are at. And you can go into your grade book and you can monitor your grades as they are posted. Now, kind of a special note, if you don't see a grade in a certain area, check to make sure that you actually did the assignment. And again, you know, and, and if we go past the, the deadline, then you're going to kind of be stuck. So again, um, you'll have a time frame to get these assignments due. But if you look in your grade book and you don't see a grade in there, if you don't see a number 
a point value. Um, you may want to just make sure that you turned it in or you actually completed the assignment. Um, extra credit. This is the area where you can find the extra credit assign assignment. And the extra credit assignment is going to be date specific as well. So make sure that you read the assignment and take note of the dates when you'll be able to submit your extra credit. So how are we going to do this class? Now we're at that point where we're going to kind of get a little bit deeper um, and, and how the instruction is going to go. Well, there'll be lectures and again, audio lectures or just a PowerPoint lecture. If that's if you prefer not to hear my voice, you can just use that. Um, news articles, visual aids, video PowerPoints. We'll have some class participation over the discussion boards, written assignments, quizzes and exams and also you are always welcome to attend any of my in-class presentations from special guest speakers uh, from different areas in policing. And I will let you know those dates and times and locations via the announcements. Um, so that's why you want to make sure that you can get all that information sent directly to your the device that you're using. Now, as far as academic support goes, this is available to all students at the LRC at uh, either campus. Um, at the MSJC College or through the help desk. Um, also, as far as the school website goes, please check Canvas in your email again at least twice a week for class announcements, PowerPoints, assignments, class syllabus, links to articles or other related information. And it really is your responsibility to monitor Canvas for any class or assignment changes. Now, really important here because we are an online course is the the code of conduct and and the entire code here is available in the msjc catalog and i encourage you to read it if you have time and if you don't have a catalog you can look uh, look at one on the um, online library or the enrollment enrollment office and so again you can find it online and what i'm trying to get here is that when we do these discussion boards or similar topics there's a thing out there called netiquette and what netiquette means, it's kind of a network online etiquette. It's the etiquette of cyberspace. So in other words, netiquette is a, a set of rules for making sure that you are behaving properly online, specifically for us, would be the discussion boards. Now, there's an individual out there by the name of Vir Virginia Shea, and she's defined the issues as far as netiquette goes and discusses them at length in a book that she has uh, called netiquette and, and, and you can view that I have a link here where you can go and view some of that but basically what I want you to kind of take from this conversation is that we are all different and because of that we're all going to have some differences of opinion and some of the discussions that we're going to have on these discussion boards are going to be subjects of debate and, and a simple example could be the death penalty. And there are those that are very for the death penalty and there are those that are very against it and there are those that are kind of stuck in the middle. But what I want us to do is when we post our discussions and some notes and maybe even if we respond to a classmate about a comment or something, that we understand and we respect everybody's opinion regardless of what it is. Because at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is get various opinions and learn from them. That's the reason for the discussion board, so people can share their information and their thought processes on these different topics that are sometimes sensitive, but they are extremely important because it's some of the stuff taking place in policing today. Like whether or not an officer should be able to just pick up your cell phone and search it. And some people don't care and some do care. But these are real issues. So to kind of bring that whole conversation back around, just be mindful that we all have opinions and that we are all a little bit different. And please watch your language again when you're using the discussion boards. But it, this is a great opportunity for us to exchange information on these hot or relevant topics in policing. So enough said about that. 
Um, if you need some other information for uh, websites that can kind of help you, maybe look up court cases or different things like that, I have a couple listed here for you. But now we're going to get into the, the, the super important part, the exams and quizzes. And I know you've all been just waiting for me to get to this part because it's the most important part, right? So the, the quiz and exam questions are going to come directly from your textbook. Another reason to have that. Um, lecture PowerPoints or the audio lecture or a designated article or video. Now, each week, you're going to have a reading assignment. That's going to be your chapter that, you're, that you need to cover. Your lecture PowerPoint, and it's going to be, you'll see the PowerPoint lecture itself and then an audio version, so you'll have both. And you'll have a short 10-question quiz that covers the, the, the corresponding chapter. So if we're in Chapter 1 and that's the chapter you're reading, then we're going to have a 10-question a quiz on Chapter 1. Now, there really are, there's 14 chapters in the textbook, and I added one. So the total amount of chapters will be 15. So we'll have 15 quizzes, one 10 question quiz for every chapter. Now, in addition, there's going to be three chapter exams, and those chapter exams are 50 questions each. And those chapter exams, as I'll show you in just a minute, they will encompass the chapters that we covered. So the example would be when we're done with chapters one through five, you will have had five 10 question quizzes. And then you'll have a chapter exam covering those five chapters. Does that make sense? Along with that, throughout the entire semester, you're only going to have four discussion boards. And then remember, the first one is the check-in. That counts as a discussion board, you checking in. And then finally, you're going to have one midterm writing assignments. So a little more on the discussion boards real quick. Again, you're going to have four. The first is the check-in. Each one of these discussion boards is worth up to five points. And when you respond to these discussion boards, please make sure that you read the information or you watch the corresponding video or read the article and respond with a complete well thought out response. The more focused and thought out the response, the more points you're going to get. Don't just say, I agree with so and so, or yes, I agree, we should do this. Tell me what you think about it. And of course, that's going to give you more points. Now, I don't need a whole page long. I, if you could give me four or five sentences, like a very little short paragraph, that would be awesome. And you would get full points for something like that. But I really am interested in what you think about a particular subject. So please make it worth your while and you'll learn from everybody else's responses as well. So with that being said, again, kind of an overview. And what I want to talk about now is kind of the format or the layout of the class. So all lectures, PowerPoints, quizzes, exams, discussion board information, and other assignments are going to be posted and available on Wednesday nights at 5 p.m. That's when your course week opens. And all assignments then are due the following Tuesday night at 11 p.m. So as an example, the class, this class, officially opens on Wednesday, January 16th at 5 o'clock. That's when you'll be able to see week one. Now remember, because it's an online class, the first week, I'm going to open it a couple days earlier, but this is just for example purposes. So, I mean, again, so it opens on Wednesday, the 16th at 5 p.m., which means that you're going to have until the following Tuesday or January 22nd at 11 p.m., to do everything in the week one module. Does that make sense? And really, for week one, all it's going to be is the discussion board check-in and the syllabus quiz. Those two things need to be done within that six-day period. And here's another reason for self-regulation. Remember, don't wait until the last minute. A lot of people do that, and they find themselves in trouble. 
You don't have to do it right when it opens if you don't want to, but find yourself a, a good routine to get in on when you typically do your assignments and then you won't fall behind. So again, this means that all quizzes, exams, discussion boards, or other assignments for the week have to be posted and they need to be done the following Tuesday night by 11 p.m. and there are no exceptions really. So as a general rule, there's no makeup assignments because I'm giving you six days to complete these weekly assignments. So it's up to you to get that work done. Now, if you have an emergency, I know that life happens. I, I, I get that. And these emergencies then, I'll, I will evaluate them on a case-by-case -case basis, you know, jury duty, military deployment, verified medical emergencies. Those are emergencies. You procrastinating until the last day, that's not an emergency, okay? So you need to, again, you need to self-regulate. That's the importance of that. So please keep in mind that it is your responsibility to make time for completing the assignments. Again, don't wait until the last minute. And while I will do my best, and I will, and you'll see, to remind you of due dates and other information, it is at the end of the day your responsibility to know when things are due and to plan accordingly. So I put together a couple of helpful hints. And there are two main issues that I tend to see with online students who experience problems. The first one is the inability to keep track of due dates. So again, you need to be able to self-pace and regulate, meaning that you have to keep track of the assignment due dates and, and, and don't wait until the last minute to do it. Now, second, the thought that because there are so many assignments, there's so many little quizzes every week, you know, just one per week, but because there's like 15 of them, hey, you know what, if I miss a few, it really doesn't matter. Well, you know what, it's going to matter because those quizzes start to add up the discussion boards start to add up. And while I do offer some extra credit, if you fall too far behind, there's nowhere else to get those points. This course is based on points. That's the, the, the importance of those quizzes and some of those smaller assignments. So just remember that missing assignments, they add up very quickly. And before you know it, you're falling a little bit behind. Now, just something to point out, and we're right here, on the weeks that you have a chapter exam, you're still going to be required to do the little quiz. And again, I'll show you this visually in just a second how that lays out. But remember, every chapter has a quiz. So you'll have, you're going to have a 10-question quiz every single week. And then let's say after maybe five chapters, after we do those five, then you're going to have a, a, a chapter exam on those five. Does that make sense? pretty much like a face-to-face -face class does. And, and, and the reason for that, of course, is to make sure that you've been exposed to each chapter, these quizzes. Um, and then these, quiz, these quizzes, you need to do well on those because they're going to help you with your chapter exam. They can be kind of like your little study guide. So a hint here, do the quiz first and then do your chapter exam if it happens to be one of those weeks. So just kind of point of reference as I put here again, if you study and do well on the quizzes, you are going to do well on the chapter exams. So study those things very, very thoroughly. So grading, again, it, it, it's a point scale. So I grade on points. A good way to kind of figure out where you're at if you're trying to look during the semester is that you can figure out how many total points we've had and you know, up to a certain point. Um, and then you can take 90% of that and that'll give you a point value. Um, but you can see how it goes right here. But again, um, we go by points. Well, how many points are there? Here, here are the assignments. So if you look right here, we're going to have three chapter exams. Your third one is the final. Now, I want you to keep in mind that these chapter exams are not cumulative. So on your final, you're not going to have stuff from the two previous chapter exams. It's just going to cover the things that we've covered, say, in those four or five weeks. So you have three of those. Discussion boards, you'll have four. The first one is the check-in. So you, those with four, they're going to be 20 points total. Your syllabus quiz is 10 points. Your midterm paper is 30 points. And remember, we talked about 15 quizzes at 10 points apiece. That's 150. So your total possible points in the course will be 360. 
Um, now, keep in mind, the above point, the, the points that I've just gone over, they are subject to change as I may add or remove an assignment. Typically, I don't, but you never know. I might go crazy one day and add something in there. Your final exam, again, is not cumulative, meaning it only covers the chapters that were assigned. It doesn't go all the way back to chapter one. So I don't expect you to know stuff from chapter one when we're doing the final. Okay, it'll just cover those four or five chapters that we previously uh, went over with the lectures. And then there's also going to be an extra credit assignment. It could be an article or a video review. Uh, could be up, and, and it will be up to probably 15 points. So you can get a you can get up to a total of 15 points for that. So keep that in mind as well. Some important dates for you to remember, and I'm not going to go through all of these. We know that regular instructions, the new semester does start on the 14th. Um, your spring break, uh, the dates are listed right here. Your final exams here, um, and so on. Um, so your written assignment, just to kind of uh, kind of go through this. Oh, let me back up just a second here. Um, Mount San Jacinto College abides by the American with Disabilities Act of Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 that prohibits federal and state agencies or programs from discriminating against qualified individuals with disabilities. If there's an issue and you need access to something and it's not in a format or way that you need, please let me know and I will make sure that we work out whatever it is. Uh, that we need to work out, okay? So kind of enough said on that, but if you need some assistance in any way, shape, or form, please communicate with me so I know exactly what it is so I can make sure that I respond to that quickly and get you the information that you need to be successful in this course. Now the fun part, and nobody likes this part, it's the written assessment or the written assignment. Um, there is an assessment instrument, there's, it's called a rubric, that I have posted in there that will provide you with some of the areas on how I'm going to grade your, your term paper or an oral, oral presentation. We're going to do a term paper on this particular semester. Your actual midterm paper is going to be on a United States Supreme Court case. The case is Miranda versus Arizona. And... I'm going to kind of walk through this a little bit. In your Canvas shell, you will see a separate module area titled Midterm Essay. That will have the assignment information, just as you're looking at right here, along with a PowerPoint on how to cite your references. There will be an audio lecture going through some of the similar information. So I put together a lecture to show you how to reference your citations in the text. Um, how to write an APA formatted paper. Um, so take a look at that information, but he here's what you're going to be required to do. It's a three-page essay, if you will. We'll call it a brief. And it needs to contain this information. So I'm basically giving you this information. And if you answer all of these pretty much in your essay, you're going to fill up three pages so fast, um, you, won't, you won't have to stress out over that. Now, your paper needs to provide two references. And if you don't turn it in, there's, there's no makeup for this. So you need to turn it in when the due date shows in the syllabus. And we'll get to that due date in just a few minutes. This, uh, this will open up on the first day of class. And it's typically due somewhere around like week 10. But I'll give you the exact time frame in just a moment. But you have you know pretty much nine to 10 weeks to get this entire thing done. And it's not that long. The paper, again, needs to be three pages long, double space, 12-point font with a cover sheet. Again, please use Microsoft Word. You also need a short abstract, and I'll explain that later. The cover sheet, the abstract, and your reference page, they don't count as the three pages. I need three pages, full pages of text. The paper has to follow APA, and again, your paper is going to be graded on a couple of different things. Now, even though I know it says spelling and grammar, I'm looking more for format, organization, completeness, and your thoughts, your opinions. I'm not, you know, I may make some notations on spelling and grammar and things like that, but I'm really not going to be that difficult when it comes to that. Now, if you need a little more help on APA, 
there's a link to Owl Purdue where you could go there. Um, it, it's a it's a great resource as it relates to APA. And again, I will also post on Canvas an instructional video on how to complete your paper and how to write in APA format. And all information for this particular assignment can be found in the module that's titled Midterm Essay. If you need additional help on writing the paper, you can go to the library where there's handouts on APA format. Um, and every library on, camp on each campus has a writing center that can help you with this paper as well. And I will also post on Canvas information on how to upload your essay because I don't want you to print it out and email it or I don't want you to attach it to an email and send it to me. You're going to upload it into Canvas and it's very simple to do so, uh, but I'll show you that in just a few minutes. Now, very, very important, and I, I don't want to spend too much time on this, is this thing called plagiarism. Now, understand that copying even a part of a sentence from a text, an article, or a news story in a paper without acknowledging the source or using quotes is plagiarism. Now, I don't want you to overquote. Don't quote just like every sentence. But you do need to cite when the information is not yours. And, and copying and changing just a couple of words is still similar to plagiarism, okay? And I've kind of given you some points here that talk about a good rule of thumb. If you didn't think of it yourself or it's not common knowledge, you need to reference it. You need to cite it. And if you're not sure, cite it anyway because you can't get, you're not going to get marked down for over-citing. So again, anytime you use the words or ideas of somebody else without giving them credit, that's what the citation is. That's considered plagiarism, whether or not your actions are intentional or not. Does that make sense? Number two, differences between direct and indirect quotes. And I've got some information that kind of help you there. So this is just a little bit of information, but you know, just understand that you need to cite your references. And, we'll, and, and I will go over that in that video that's available to you. All right, so moving on to the course outline. And this is how the course is going to be laid out by weeks. And it's, again, it's very simple. So as we start at the top, and we're not going to go through the whole thing, but we'll go through a couple. Week one, remember, technically, we're going to open it a couple days early, but actually it opens on Wednesday, January 16th at what time? 5 p.m. And it's going to close. This week one is going to close six days later or on January 22nd, a Tuesday night at 11 p.m. And you'll see how consistent this is. So you have those six days to do the student check-in. And that's going to cover like what we're doing right now, the syllabus review and going over the assignments and talking about grading and the midterm assignment, et cetera. The things that need to get done in week one are the discussion board, number one. That's the check-in, the official check-in, so I know that you're out there. And the syllabus review quiz, that's it. I'm hoping that makes <coughs> excuse me, a little bit of sense. So let's look at number two, week two. It's going to open on Wednesday the 23rd at 5 p.m. And it's going to close the following Tuesday at 11 p.m., we're going to cover chapter one, <clears throat> which is the, the evolution of law enforcement and the criminal justice system. There's going to be your chapter reading and the PowerPoint and the audio lecture, and we're going to have a quiz. That's week two. Now, as more things get added, remember we have discussion boards. So if we go down to week five, we see we're going to cover chapter four today's police and police agency. There's going to be the reading and the PowerPoint audio lecture. There's going to be your quiz, because remember, you have a quiz every week. And now your second discussion board is due in between these two dates. Now let's go one more, week six. We're going to do chapter five, and this is policing in a post-9-11 society. You'll have the PowerPoint, re you'll have the reading, the PowerPoint, the audio lecture. You're going to have a quiz. And then remember, you're also now going to have your first chapter exam covering chapters one through five. So every week, you're going to see things that look pretty similar. Week 10, important to remember, this is spring break. 
So you don't have any assignments, but in this week, the extra credit assignment will open and only during this week. So if you want to do the extra credit, you have to do it during this week. And then you can see how everything else goes. Um, important here, week 11. So you have your weekly quiz, etc. You have discussion board three. And this is the week that your midterm writing assignment is due. So remember, it opens up, the writing assignment opens up the first day of class. So you have up until week 11, this date, April 2nd, which is going to be a Tuesday. Remember, opens on a Wednesday, closes on a Tuesday at 11 p.m. to do these things. And one of those things is to make sure that you get this turned in. And then you can kind of look at how it goes all the way down. So that's, that's just a, an overview of the syllabus. Where I wanted to go now is to kind of show you, and I'll extend this out a little bit so you can see it, is what the home page kind of looks like. And we're not going to click around everywhere, but we are going to navigate just a little bit. So this is kind of a, what, what your, your home page should look like. And it tells you a little bit of information. It's got a little video for you to watch. And yes, that's a picture of me over at Cambridge University. I know that's kind of cool, right? And over on the left side, you'll see your navigation bar. And, you know, when you go to the discussions page, if you were to click on that, you'll see where the discussions are. So I'll just click on it. Now, the view might be a little bit different because I'm in teacher view. And, of course, since the class hasn't really started yet, uh, when I'm, I'm doing this lecture a little bit beforehand, it's going to open up. But you'll see we have discussion board one. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's your check-in. And then you'll have discussion board two, three, and four. And then I have a general question discussion board. So if you have a general question, you can post it there. If you want more information on the syllabus, you can click on the syllabus link. And you will see a funny picture of me. I forgot that I had it there. The syllabus will be linked in here so you can open it and look at it. But you'll also you'll also have a link to the audio syllabus that I'm doing right now. So if you need a little bit of information on that. And inside this syllabus is a great tool that's called your course summary that shows you kind of like everything that's going to go on during the entire semester. When you go to the modules page, this is important. Remember, we talked about the modules page. It will take you to different things. So first, I have a welcome and some important information. If you want to know information on the Criminal Justice Club, you can go here. I have some cool websites. So if you're interested in forensics or homicides or things, you can go to these websites. I have videos on the Bill of Rights. And I recommend that you actually watch this. They're not very long. I think they're probably anywhere from, say, five minutes to 10 minutes long per video. And it, this is the history of the Bill of Rights, and then it walks you for, through the first 10 amendments. So again, it's kind of a really good way for you to learn about the court system. A couple of important court cases. I have some very important information, and this one here is important. So I would suggest that when you get into the Canvas shell that you click on this, and it, it kind of walks you through some other important information about this class. I've got the calendar up there, some fast facts, how to use Canvas. Now, remember I talked about the midterm essay? It's got its own module. This is where you would click to learn about what the essay is. Here's the audio version of the PowerPoint lecture on APA. Remember I told you about that? Here's just the PowerPoint on APA if you just want to look at that. Here's an example of a paper. Here's the writing rubric on how the grades are going to go, and then here's um, how to upload your paper. And then remember each week, I titled each module, remember? So week one. So this would be the first week. There's a little introduction. Remember, you have a discussion board check-in. Then you have the syllabus review, which is what we're doing right now. You have an audio version. And then I have an audio closed caption version, should you like that or want that or what have you. And then we have the syllabus quiz. And then I also threw in there some videos of the different court systems, which I think would be something relevant for you to watch before we start to get into the next 
weekly modules and you can see how they're broken down. Week two, this is everything. And to show you how I break the, even the PowerPoints down a little bit, so let's look at week two. You have an introduction to the chapter. If you click on here, that gives you the terms, some key terms. This is just a regular PowerPoint, the chapter one lecture PowerPoint. I've got it in the PowerPoint format. If you don't like it in that format, I have it in a PDF version. If you want the audio, you go to this link here and it's the audio lecture, just like what I'm doing right now of the chapter one PowerPoint. So it has the PowerPoint in the background with, with myself narrating the PowerPoint. And then finally, there's the audio version of the same lecture with closed captioning should you, should you want that or need that. And then finally, your quiz. So this is the stuff that's available in week two, and it goes all the way down. Does that kind of make sense? Now, remember, we talked about extra credit really quick. Well, this is the spring break week. So when we get here, your extra credit assignment will be built into this particular week. Hopefully that makes sense. So it's very consistent all the way down. So that's really kind of a walkthrough of, of the syllabus and of what the Canvas shell looks like. Um, also grades again, so you can go grades for here, um, announcements for here, and if you need assistance, there are some other things there. Uh, there's Net Tutor where you can get some assistance on certain things. Um, the, the last thing I wanted to kind of share with you again is this please read page. Remember I talked about it and you can't see the whole thing. I apologize for that. It kind of cuts off in the window view, but again, it walks you through some of the same information that we've gone through just to make sure that you are successful in your course. So I leave you with this picture here and let me kind of frame it a little bit better not because it's cool and it's me surfing in Hawaii, but because it's spring. And spring kind of leads into summer. So this is, instead of the cold winter months, we've made it through the holidays. Now we're going into the, the sunny days and, and, and then slowly moving into the summer months. But I thought that this might uplift your spirits um, as we're through the cold times, or at least most of them, and we're kind of moving into uh, spring and then subsequently summer. So that's going to conclude our audio lecture on the course syllabus for AJ 102. Again, introduction to criminal justice and law enforcement. And I hope that this was valuable to you um, as I hope that some of the other audio lectures on each week are valuable to you as well. Um, also, just one last thing to point out, if in fact, as you're taking a quiz or you're going through some of the information, you find something that's not, that you deem not correct because sometimes uh, some of the information may not be, uh, the right box may not be checked. So you might find something that doesn't, maybe an answer on a quiz you don't think is right. Um, what I'm asking is that you let me know and you can send me an email direct or you can post it on the discussion board and I will take a look at it. I'm not asking you to challenge every question that I have up there, but sometimes mistakes do happen or some particular box wasn't checked and should have been. Um, so just let me know and I will work that out and we'll make sure that everybody is successful as we go through the semester. So again, that concludes our um, overview on the syllabus quiz and welcome again to AJ 102 online.